<laughs> Welcome all back to the channel everybody. We are going to go down a different avenue today of the outdoors called bushcraft and the first video is starting fire. First of all let me say I am not an expert on bushcraft, woodcraft, or survival. This is something that I have been uh, reading about and practicing on my own for about a year now and was inspired about two years ago when I went to New Zealand and started backpack hunting and I've made that a part of my life. I love to do that every year and going camping and kind of simplifying things in the backwoods. Love doing that and I think it's an important skill uh, bushcraft is to learn as an outdoorsman. There's a lot of aspects of it that will help you be a better total outdoorsman which I want to be. I want to be a great total outdoorsman. Hopefully when I die my children will be able to say that. I thought this would be a fun series to share with y'all as I start out doing this. The first one being fire. We're doing this in the backyard, very controlled environment. Uh, the next step is to go into the backcountry, the actual backcountry in Texas and setting up a camp uh, and that's going to be a, a new experience for me in, in terms of setting up a really primitive style camp. So when I've done backcountry hunting, you know, I've taken a lot of gear. Uh, I've taken really nice tents and equipment and uh, burners for food and all this stuff. Bushcraft is different. Bushcraft is about simplifying things and kind of making your way with uh, very limited tools and supplies. And as Nesmuk would say, that's called it's smoothing it. You're not roughing it, you're smoothing it survival skills and bushcraft are a little bit different so uh, bushcraft is more about enjoying your experiences with little devices and uh, survival you know I mean that's basically like worst case scenario type stuff so I'm not going there uh, we're just gonna enjoy doing bushcraft here first step and probably the most important is making fire and how to do that with a ferrocerium rod or a fire steel whatever you want to call it uh, and just your natural materials. So first of all, what is even a ferrocerium rod? I'm just gonna take the one off of my knife sheath here to show you as an example. First of all, if you're gonna do bushcraft, you wanna have a lot of fire steels. Uh, don't just carry one, carry multiples, but the best thing about a fire steel is it goes you know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of strikes making sparks and you can do it in freezing cold temperatures so lighters uh, as I found out in, in Colorado last year don't always work in cold temperatures you can definitely carry a lighter uh, kind of the rule of thumb is though wh whenever you're starting a fire you want about five seconds of that light uh, to really get things going the, the fire is not just about uh, uh, getting the spark and the fire steel um, even if you have a lighter you want to be able to get that fire going within five seconds so we're gonna to go to that next but a fire steel is basically uh, some magnesium I'm not sure what other types of metals are in there uh, but when you strike a fire steel it creates these sparks that you can then create a fire with so you see these sparks coming off here that's basically the, the idea with this um, and it burns very, very hot. I think it's around 3,000 degrees. And it's super easy to carry. You can carry a bunch of them. It doesn't take up much room or weight in your pants pocket or your pack or whatever you're carrying. And it's very, very reliable. So that's why you want to use those. So the most important thing that I've learned so far about making fire, uh, especially here in Texas, is having the right tinder. So the way you start a fire, get a good fire going, is you, you have tinder, which is going to be your really flammable natural materials like grasses and barks, um, things like that. And then you're gonna have kindling. Kindling is gonna be small groups of very dry materials, sticks like this. And then you're gonna have your fuel, and your fuel is your actual logs, like water behind me. So those are the, the three things that you really need to make fire. So this bag right here has tinders in it. Uh, some I've used before, some I've never used, and we're gonna try them and see which ones work the best. But you know, here in Texas, we have 
a few trees that allow us to use the bark of the tree to start fires. Uh, probably the most common, uh, if you're in central Texas, I have some here, is cedar. So the bark off of evergreen trees like, like cedar, uh, you can scrape that off and you can use that. And it's a real dry, fine, crispy material. That's, that's what you want. Another common one that we're going to have is dried grasses. So I've got some dried grass, and this stuff is going to be extra dry now that I've picked it. I put it in this burlap sack, and it's been hanging up uh, for more than a day now. Dry rotted wood is one that I've never used before. I've only read about it, but you can use that. And since it, I got it when it was sort of wet, I pulled the driest pieces off. But you can take this dry rotted wood, and now it's, I mean, it is just super lightweight and dry now. You can kind of crunch this up, and you can use that as a tender. So I have quite a bit of that. And you'll find this on, on the ground after it starts decaying and it gets spongy. Another one I saw on the ground that was, even despite it being wet, this stuff was still dry, and that was willow leaves. So old leaves off a of willow tree. We're in uh, winter right now, so none of the trees have leaves, but uh, those dry, crunchy leaves off a of willow tree, that's basically it right there. And what we're gonna do is make a bird's nest out of these materials. And a bird's nest is used to carry an ember and then eventually light on fire. Another thing that you can do that I've learned in the backyard here in Texas, we don't have that many <laughs> good trees that will feather stick nicely and light on fire. Uh, but a feather stick is another way that you can start a fire and you want to use your knife and create these, these, uh, these curls that just increase the surface area of the wood material that you're using and it helps it light on fire a lot quicker. And the one species that I know of that you can do this with is ash. So I have quite a few ash trees in the yard. They are like ugly, spindly looking trees. It's one of the few woods that you can take even when it's wet and you can still make feather sticks and get a fire going. This one has been dried out and um, it should light on fire pretty quick if I, if I put some sparks on it. So let's get out the fire still and see this knowledge we've obtained, see if it works and we can make some fire with these tenders. I forgot to mention fatwood. I know some of y'all are gonna say that in the comments. If you can find fatwood, which is a, a resin soaked piece of wood off an evergreen tree, like a pine tree, uh, that is probably the best. So to start off, we're just gonna take our knife and to do bushcraft, you just need a, a good carbon steel knife or a, a good hard steel knife. Uh, I am a knife nut. That is one reason that I started getting into bushcraft. I have uh, dozens of good um, outdoor knives, bushcraft knives. They don't have to be crazy expensive. You know, I'm using a more bushcrafter, which I think is like $60. You know, you don't have to have a three, $400 knife uh, to go out and do this. You just need a good, decent knife. This one's not full tang, but almost. Anyways, I'm really not sure uh, the best way to process this, but I'm going to try this right here. This looks pretty daggum good. I don't know if you guys can see that. You got to have a pretty sharp knife to be able to make these little curlies like this. Man, I'm telling you what, this right here, this might be the best thing around. Dry rotted curlies, you can see the holes in it. This reminds me of like little chocolate shavings. That's how, that's how smooth this is coming off of this, this spongy wood. I'm going to try another piece, but oh yeah, that stuff is going to light up. Now in some other woods, you know, if they're, they're hard, you can just take the spine of your knife And you can just run that on there and that's making a really fine little powder but this stuff is just so spongy it's actually hard to do that so I'm just gonna take these little shavings and see what we can do with them I'm 
also what I've learned about bushcraft is it's just being resourceful so you want to take whatever you've got around you and that's what you're working with it's not carrying in a bunch of stuff and getting bogged down with a heavy pack it's just having the knowledge to go about and do this type stuff and uh, it's a lot it's a lot I haven't until this point felt sort of confident that I can go do it on my own in the wild don't blow away key thing when using the fire steel when I first started using it I was trying to take the knife and throw the sparks at the the tinder with the knife like push push them out and usually what happens is the embers will hit and they'll start just bouncing around and usually if you try to do it really with the knife pushing it it's going to go over it and it'll it'll just go around it the easiest thing to do is to put uh, the fire still where you want that spark to go like really point it at it and pull back so you're pulling back like you're starting a lawnmower more than you are pushing forward with your knife you're going to have more control doing that let's see if we can do this with the wind all right that that's what you want right there i definitely missed but that ember uh, staying lit like that, that means you got a good piece flying off the steel. Okay, hit it, nothing. There it goes. Okay, that's lit. That's a good that's a good ember on there that's lit. So if I could move that into my uh, into my grass bundle and I could probably get it going here. I'm just gonna see if I can get one more piece going. That's still on fire right now. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like too. Oh wow, it's still going. It could actually light up. There's a fire. Woo! Well, those little embers got me. So that's going. I could put my uh, my dry grasses on there, and that's holding pretty nicely. How I actually got it to light on fire, I put my rod on the wood, and I was able to get a a lot of pressure on my knife to then. Uh, make a good good curly bit come off of that fire steel try to do it again yeah there it goes they're just lit so that is just literally spongy dry wood from the woods take the old crock stamp that out there we go Wow, that's really good stuff, guys. Cause it's it's staying, it's got enough um, it's got enough meat on the bone there to keep a good ember lit. Where you could take this, you know, I could take this and move this entire thing into uh, into a fire if I wanted to. So really impressed with um, what I just did right there, quite honestly, because I've never done that before, and that material seems to to hold that. Uh, that heat hold that burn for a longer time than say uh, a smaller drier material which we're about to use gosh this wind is freaking crazy so the way to really do this if I if I really wanted to get a fire going was take the dry spongy rotted wood and I would place that into the dry grass once that is going all that will catch you know you can literally find little sticks feather sticks they take a long time to do and if if you're in a hurry what I would do is find small diameter twigs that are dry like this 
if you're in a hurry, if they're snapping like that and they're, you know, less than pencil diameter, you can use that just as good as you can this. If, if you have a little time and you want to break down a piece of wood like this, you can take your knife and you can baton the sticks or take your axe, whatever you want to do, and, uh, and you can make, you know, just start processing the wood down. It's really easy to do. You just take a, a heavier stick and you knock on your knife. If y'all want to see how to do that, I'll just show you real quick. Just take your knife and you'll knock your uh, knife into the wood. You could also lay it down and split it. You can split it that way. There's, uh, there's, there's, you know, a couple ways that you can split it. And if you got a, an axe, you can break down bigger pieces of wood. But anyway, that's just something you can do with your knife to, uh, to help get those, those kindlings going. What I've been doing is just stacking my kindling in a little square like this. Just like you're playing Lincoln Logs. I think it's easier than trying to build a TP real quick. Because it's going to happen fast. Your tinder's on fire and then you're trying to like build that. So this is just super simple. You know, make your little Lincoln Long House, set it on fire. So with the dry rotted wood, it took me like 10 strikes to get that thing going. Which isn't terrible. I mean, when I used to try to get fires going, I would do like 30 or 40 strikes on the fire steel. You just really start removing a lot of material and at that point you need to step back and go, okay, my my material of my, my tinder is not good. Uh, this is probably 1095 high carbon steel. I have, I have other knives that are really, really hard steels like L-Max. Yeah, that's my favorite steel and there's another one called AEBL steel. That is my absolute favorite for uh, just for striking a fire steel. There's something, there's something about it, the hardness that it just really comes off. But you can do it with any uh, carbon steel knife, high carbon steel knife. It's just some are a little bit better than others. So that's the idea though. You want to have a great 90 degree spine even on your striker. If you get a striker, a lot of these will come with strikers. You're going to use that 90 degree spine and get it at its sharpest point and try to get the most material off there and it's not about speed. It's just about pressure and um, being smooth with it and just fast enough to where it will really pop off a good chunk of that. You want that hot spark to stay going as long as you can to really ignite things. Now, what I have here is bark off a cottonwood tree. Uh, cottonwood, as the, the name implies, I'm assuming maybe a long time ago, people found out that this, this material is really good for, um, it's really fibrous. So if I, if I pull this material apart, you'll see these inner barks of the tree, and there's there's layers of these inner barks, and they are just really dry, fibrous, just great material for starting fire. So that's, that's one of the few trees we have around here that would uh, be a good example of that. So inner barks, you can get them off other types of poplar trees things like that. This, this is a type of poplar tree, but cottonwood, if y'all are from Texas, cottonwoods are, they're very noticeable. They, they run along creeks and they are huge. They're one of the biggest trees that we have in Texas. So you'll know when you see one um, and you'll, you can know if you open it up and you see this, this kind of bark right here, that's a cottonwood. So almost looks like a corn husk. We're going to take that and see if we can get that to light just by itself. I'm going to take that outer stuff off and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to get it real crunchy. And a lot of these pieces will actually fall on the ground. So if you have like a, like a dry bag or uh, a sack or anything I have a piece of wood right here that I've cut but if you're out in the bush you know you could use um, the outer bark of a tree to do this over and that way you keep this in here that's actually a really good good idea to do didn't get a spark that time 
There's one, two, nothing yet. Three, that was a weak one. Nothing. There we lit. We lit, but I don't think we're gonna go. That one's weak too. I'm hitting those big pieces. I need those little fibers in there. I can get hit. Okay, that's a good one. Not catching like the dry rotted wood. There we go. That took like 15 strokes right there. So that should just continue to go and I could take this and I could move this to, uh, to my fire lay or I could just start placing the kindling right on top of this. Okay, we're gonna have to use the crock again. Stomp her out. The crock, might as well add that to the, to the bushcraft tool list. Uh, cedar is gonna be probably really close to this category. Uh, same sort of thing and you're just collecting the uh, the outside bark of that cedar and crunching it up this same way and I've started a couple of fires doing that uh, just the way I just did there. Now I want to try to get these little willows in here and start and start these because this is something that I, I just saw and I thought man that looks like excellent tinder material but we'll give it a try. I mean, this stuff is just about as crunchy as it gets. Some of these, actually a lot of these are on stems. I'm just gonna crunch them up. They almost look like chili peppers. If you were to take a dried chili pepper, looks kind of like that. But they are extremely light and look extremely flammable, so. I'll tell you guys, what I actually really like is using the inside of this cottonwood to help hold that stuff. I'm just gonna do that. Well y'all, it's looking like the stems are too much. Like it's not letting the uh, it's not letting the spark really get in there good enough. I was hoping that would work out and kind of enclose it but I don't think it's gonna work okay willow leaves thought it would work but not working the best that was something I've never tried before not saying it won't work but if it's not lighting up after like 20 strikes I'm just gonna say it's not as good as some of the other things we could find so here's what we got laid out we have our bird's nest Nice and tidy little bird's nest. That is probably two fists size with the dry grasses and some of that inner cottonwood bark. And then we have our spongy uh, rotten wood that we've made shavings out of. We're going to put that into the bird's nest right here. I would do it right now, but the wind's probably gonna blow it away. And then we have our kindling. We've got some of it stacked on top of there, ready to go. Uh, and then a, a feather stick. We got a feather stick. So once we get our tinder on fire, we'll stick this above that. That'll really get this going. It'll catch on the kindling really well. And then we have fire. Then it's just adding the fuel. So logs like that, you're ready to go. Okay, now that it's calmed down just a little bit, we're gonna put this all together. Rotted out wood right there to the center. I really like the way that stuff caught. Knife, fire steel, and we're just gonna pull back on that fire steel. There we go. Oh, ember went out.
Okay, there we go. There we go. You got it. Put our other stick under there. That should catch really good. And there we go. That is a well formed fire. So that's catching. And then we can just add our fuel from here. We'll probably add just a little bit more uh, kindling and then we're all set. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is starting fire with your tinder bundles. Now, uh, I want to show you guys a cheat code because I've used this cheat code and I would still suggest and I will carry cotton balls with me because a cotton ball takes one of these sparks off of fire steel so well and it will uh, hold that flame long enough where you can really get a fire going if it is wet and as an addition to that some Vaseline if you carry a little bit of Vaseline with you which is also good for you know cuts and um, putting on your nose and your lips and stuff from being windburn and sunburn and all of that so it has multiple uses but putting Vaseline on a cotton ball it is literally like a little torch and it'll stay lit for minutes at a time and it gives you a chance to, to really get a fire going in damp, bad conditions. One of the tenets of bushcraft is really extending all of your um, resources and materials as much as you can. So last resort would be, a, would be using a lighter, something really valuable like a lighter uh, or these cotton balls, for example. Um, but the next thing that I really want to learn is using um, an actual uh, flint and steel to make sparks but cotton ball if you guys are getting into this want to learn like the basics of fires and get things going plus just have an emergency um, res uh, thing to resort to this is it right here oh there it goes mm, there it goes Even the tiniest of sparks will get that going. Still going. That is about a minute's time. So that's about all you get. If you put some Vaseline on there, you're getting, I'm going to say, two minutes. So that is step one. So I feel pretty confident in uh, making these fires out in the bush. So uh, that is the next step. I'm actually gonna go out into the bush and I'm gonna set up a camp in the wilderness, in the wild. And in fact, I've, I've camped around this area before. Many of you saw it and it's a little sketchy. If you guys wanna stay tuned for that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I wanna know in the comments if you think this is something cool. If you think this is a, a cool skill uh, to learn with me here on the channel, if you want to see more, if you want to see uh, like all of my knives and all the stuff that, um, you know, the little knowledge that I've accumulated over the last year or two, um, I'm happy to share it. Either way, I think it's going to be entertaining just, just me going out of the woods and trying to do these things. Uh, especially for the first time. Make sure to smash that like button for creating fire out of just sticks and natural materials. And stay tuned for more outdoor greatness right here on the channel, y'all. God bless. See you soon.